Greetings in the name of His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I and Her Majesty Empress Menen. Greetings in the name of Rastafari. Greetings in the name of Africa. My name is Tau Tau Haramanuba. I'm the Grand Master. Um, we are bridging the gap. This is a series of our conversations which we call Bridging the Gap because it's a gap that needs to be bridged. I am going to speak to the African boys uh, as a rabadia, as Ngagayale Bollo, the one who is responsible for taking the boys and transform them from boys to men. We are going to have this conversation as Lebullo Labashimani uh, to transform them from boys to men. Um, I'm talking to the boys as a father of eight boys. I'm talking to the boys as a father of many young men who passed through um, our school of thoughts, be it uh, within Rastafari uh, houses, be it within the African institutions that we are part of, and every now and then we'll be lecturing about uh, uh, African spirituality, African culture, African tradition, African philosophy, African manhood, and so forth. The reality is, beside the existing old age tradition of going to the mountain and Davini to go and uh, let the boys undergo initiation system where they are transformed from boys to men, the truth is the bogus schools that are all over the place that have a lot of the young boys go in there and come back dead. The bogus schools that have young boys go, they come back as super drunkards. They don't even respect their fathers. I know some history among the Pondo youths uh, in the Eastern Cape, those who went to, to the mountain, and then if your father did not go, they started to talk to their father like they are nothing. Insult them. And they contributed to the largest group of women abusers and all of that. Now we need to straighten up this thing because I know nobody's really, really talking to the black boys. Nobody's really, uh, uh, no, nothing is really catered for them. We are having uh, uh, take a girl child to school. We are having uh, conversations that are sensitive to the young, young girl child uh, and equally uh, disparaging to the boy. The boy is treated as a, already a future abuser and already a future problem. So there is no provisions for them. So I'm not going to do what society is doing to them and chastise them and beat them up. I'm going to begin from this prime premise that events of today are tomorrow's history. The boys of today are men of tomorrow. They are the husbands of tomorrow. They are the presidents of tomorrow. They are the ministers. They are the priests. They are the traditional healers. They are the future. Now, if you do not begin to nurture the future in the present, then it's a bad investment. And we haven't invested a lot on this aspect of nurturing the young boys to be the men that they should be in order to have the society that we want to have. Now, the society that we want to have is the society of responsible men, young men. The society of constructive young men. The society of developmental young men. Africa is in great and desperate need of unity. But the unity of Africa is going to be enforced by the men of Africa who are the boys of today. Now the boys of today who are the men of the future, there is nothing sufficient for them. In the schooling system, there is nothing that is teaching them how to be the better men. Now the society is not putting any institutions for, uh, for the boys uh, that when they grow up, they become a better man. But the society is placing so much blame on the boys when they go astray. Today we have a large group of Nyaupe boys all over the street. We have a large group of boys who just want to carry your load in town so that you can give your luggage in town so that you can give them something. We have boys who are all over the text rank who will ask you the obvious question, where are you going? They can see where you're going. And then once you answer them, then you're supposed to give them something. So we have a, a weaklings in the boys who are super dependent and super dependent in most nefarious ways. Uh, those who help you during the day with your luggages, 
in the evening when there's no many people there, the ones who, who mark you. Um, Uvel used to be the most vibrant area of the arts, of expression, of reggae music, of Rastafari, of consciousness, of people coming from all walk of life. That is why Uvel today, it houses about 44 African countries. But Uvel equally so have the largest boys now who are into criminality, who are into drinking uh, these cheap alcohols that are sold, then the K20s and the Alomo bitters and so forth that are sold all over the place. Now, there is so much social delinquency taking place there and which the boys are the statistics. If we talk about the black, from we say the black men is a statistic, immediately what we go to is the black boy is a statistic. The statistics of a drug abuser, the statistics of you women abuser, the statistic of, uh, of crime, in all facets you can think of. So, now there is no virtue in crime. Crime does not pay. There is no virtue in hating other people and taking other people's things. Now, the boys of today, who are the men of tomorrow, must be grounded in the value of family. Family is the building block of our community and our society that we need. And we're so much in desperate need of. So, if we are building our boys to be future and better husbands, future and better family men, future and better uh, leaders of the society, then that is a great investment that we are investing in our future. The future of the black men is not dependent on how the white men treat us. The future of the black men is dependent on how we treat one another as black people. So equally the same with the future of the black boys. The future of the black boys, it depends on how the black society treat them today as they are tomorrow's men, as they are tomorrow's grandfathers, as they are tomorrow's ancestors. They will be called upon as ancestors when they have departed from this world. Now, it's a lifelong system. Like we know that we, our African wisdom teaches us that it takes a village to grow a child. It takes a community to grow a boy child. So it can, all of these things, they're equally true with the black boy, as much as the thing they say about the black girl. Because the struggle here is a struggle of the black people, boys and girls. But in this case, the boys have been widely neglected. Things are painted under the brush of patriarchy. When you do like this, the patriarchal tendencies but we are told that patriarchy, the antithesis of it, or what is going to counterbalance it, is feminism. But feminism is another form of extremity. You are not going to solve chauvinism with feminism. You are not going to solve extremity with extremity. That is not our African society. Our African society, which was a society based on balance. The balance between the boys and the girls. The balance between the men and the women. The balance between the elders uh, the elder mamas and the elder fathers. So even with our boys now, we're talking about the boy child, what the boy child is not, but we're not talking about what the society put in place to make him be. We have left the development of the boy child on, in the rural area largely to uh, uh, the initiation schools, which have failed us for the past 26 years like this government. They failed at this money. They've produced more death of young boys. Now, second to that, we've entrusted the responsibility of the boys to the education system that is not even designed to make us Africans, but it is designed to make us Afropians. Because if you are educating an African boy in European education system, you are making him an Afropian boy when, he, uh, when he's done educated in that system. We are making him a poor imitation of the white man, of the European. So that is why we have a lot of these boys when they start to work. We don't see any improvement they do towards their own families. Their, their grandmothers are still drinking waters with the goats. Um, they are still battling with the toxicity of this world when there's much that they can do to change the lot of their own people or our people as a, as a general uh, uh, theme. Now the black boy is a statistic. If you're going to go to the statistic counts of anything that is wrong, 
uh, HIV, you're going to find that the black boy is one of that. Crime, the black boy is part of that, is the highest in that. Drug abuse, the black boy is uh, um, part of that. Now, we don't need to sit here and blame the black boy for being a statistic. We need to question what makes him the statistic. What makes him the highest statistics of drug abuse? What is it in the society that he lives in that is so depressive that he can only seek refuge in drugs? What is it in his society that he lost hope and decided to be an abuser of women? Now, these are the things we need to have conversation on when we talk about the black boys. Thorough, robust interrogation of the black boy and his plight in this modern society. I give thanks and praises to the Most High, and I hope my boys are listening and are picking up and learning something from here.